Hi everybody. So um, what I want to talk to you about in this lecture is to give you an example of a damped harmonic oscillator problem. So this is an example that I took actually from my old physics textbook, so I won't tell you what year that was published. Um, you can look it up. But it's actually volume one from Tipler's Physics for Scientists and Engineers. So let's read this together. You have a three kilogram sphere dropped in the air and it has a terminal speed of 25 meters per second. Assume that viscous friction models the drag for this uh, sphere. The sphere is attached then later to a spring of force constant 400 newtons per meter. It oscillates with an initial amplitude of 20 centimeters. So what's the quality factor Q? And when will the amplitude be 10 centimeters? And how much energy will have been lost when the amplitude is 10 centimeters? Okay, so first of all, this problem is kind of broken into two parts, isn't it? It tells you first that you're dropping a sphere and it's modeled by viscous friction and it has a terminal speed of 25 meters per second. It never gives you notice the damping coefficient. So this part of the problem is basically trying to force you to solve for the damping coefficient, or I guess in this case me. It was my textbook. So here, um, I'm just modeling it, not attached to a spring or anything. I'm just doing the free body diagram for this sphere um, being dropped under the influence of gravity and then achieving its terminal velocity. Now once it's achieved terminal velocity, of course the downward force of gravity is balanced by the upward force of the air resistance. So at that point, then the magnitude of those two vectors, mg down and cv terminal up, um, are equal. So I can set those magnitudes equal, and I can either solve for the terminal velocity, which is maybe a little bit more common of a problem, or I can solve for C. Basically, mg is equal to CV terminal, so that means that the damping coefficient C will be equal to mg divided by V terminal. Now plugging in for the mass of three kilograms, the acceleration due to gravity of 9.8 meters per second squared, and the terminal velocity of 25 meters per second, I end up with a drag coefficient of 1.18 kilograms per second. Okay? So now I can use that drag coefficient and um, calculate the quality factor and some other important things that I need for the rest of the problem. All right, so the next part of the problem says, what is the quality factor Q? Okay. In a previous lecture um, on damping, we went over a lot of these different constants. So we defined gamma as a kind of shorthand damping, which is equal to C over M. So gamma is equal to 1.18 kilograms per second divided by 3 kilograms, which is about 0 0.4 inverse seconds for this problem. Now the natural frequency of oscillation when you attach this sphere to a spring would be equal to the spring constant divided by the mass, right, um, square root of that. So omega naught squared is equal to K over M, and then omega naught, of course, is the square root of K over M. So if I solve for the natural frequency um, of this uh, mass on a spring, I would get omega naught is equal to the square root of 400 newtons per meter divided by 3 kilograms, which gives me a natural resonant frequency of 11.547 radians per second. Okay. Now that would be the frequency in the absence of damping. What is it with damping? Okay. So that expression is omega is equal to the square root of the natural frequency squared minus gamma squared over 4. Okay, so plugging that in, I end up with a uh, frequency for damped oscillations of 11.545 radians per second. So notice here that omega and omega naught are very, very close. It doesn't shift the frequency too much, in other words, to have that damping in there. Okay, so in that case, I can calculate my quality factor. My quality factor Q is equal to omega over gamma. So plugging in my value for omega, 11.545 radians per second, divided by gamma, right, which is 0 0.4 inverse seconds, I end up with a quality factor of 29.5. And if you round to 30, that's totally fine. Okay, so that's my quality factor. That was the second part of this question. Now, the next part of the question said, it oscillates with an initial amplitude of 20 centimeters What's the quality factor? When will the amplitude be 10 centimeters? Okay, so this is the decay of the amplitude. All right, 
So remember that for damped harmonic oscillators, we describe the motion x of t as a e to the minus gamma t over 2 cosine of omega t plus b. Okay? So if I plug in for that, um, I'm going to assume that I can start my uh, stopwatch whenever I want. So I'll just set my phase constant phi here equal to 0, because why not? I can, right? And then plugging in for the rest of that, my amplitude, my initial amplitude is 20 centimeters, and then I plug in for gamma, e to the minus 0.4 inverse seconds times t over 2, and then times the cosine of omega, which is 11.545 radians per second times t. So that's my equation of motion, okay? Now, it's only asking me about what time it is when the amplitude is 10 centimeters. So that means I'm not really caring so much about the exact position of my mass, right? I just want to know when its amplitude is 10 centimeters. So that means that I can take the stuff that multiplies the cosine, which is this 20 centimeters times e to the minus 0.4t over 2 part. I can take that and set that equal to 10 centimeters, okay? Okay, so solving for that, um, I can divide both sides out by 20, and I have e to the minus 0.4t over 2 is equal to a half. And now to simplify that and solve for the time, I take the natural log of both sides to cancel out my exponential. And when I do that, I end up with 0.4 times t over 2 is equal to minus natural log of a half. Now doing just a little bit of algebra, I can simplify and see that t is equal to minus 2 times the natural log of a half divided by 0.4. And when I solve for that, I end up with 3.47 seconds. So that's how long it takes until the amplitude is halved, okay? All right. Now, the last part of the question says, how much energy will have been lost when the amplitude is 10 centimeters? Okay. Well, we do know that this is a light damping situation. And in a light damping situation, we can say that the energy is proportional to 1 half Ka squared times e to the minus gamma t, or that the energy is proportional to the initial energy times e to the minus gamma t. So we know this is light damping because the damped frequency is really close to the natural frequency, right? We saw that. Okay, so good. What I can do here is how much energy is lost? Well, let's figure out what fraction of energy is left at this time. So that would be e over e naught is equal to this e to the minus gamma t. Plugging in for gamma and t, I've got e to the minus 0.4 inverse seconds times 3.47 seconds. When I do that, I get about 0.25 or a quarter. So only about a quarter of the energy is left at this time, okay? So that means that 75% of the initial energy has been lost. Now, honestly, you didn't need this expression, e is equal to e naught e to the minus gamma t, to figure this out. All you had to remember was that the energy of an oscillator is proportional to one half times the spring constant times the amplitude squared. So, if the amplitude drops to a half of its initial amplitude, then we've only got one fourth of the initial energy because it goes as the amplitude squared. And so you could have said 75% straight off the bat without any exponential decay. But hey, it's good. We can plug it into our little equations and show that the logic matches either way. And that's always reassuring, isn't it? Okay. All right. Well, I hope that was a clear example and that you understood it. And I'll see you in class.